Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com. This video is gonna be a little bit different today because I didn't really plan it, <laughs> oh dear, but a series of events and circumstances compelled me to record it, so here we are. The problem is I am a recovering perfectionist. So when I wanna set up a video, for instance, I wanna sort of have it outlined and some talking points written down so that I can sound articulate and somewhat smart. <laughs> and if, if all of the circumstances are not absolutely perfect, then I won't do it. So um, I wonder if it's like that for you with your photography, like you want everything to be perfect before you share it with anyone or show anyone. And we just kind of have to get over that. I think when it holds you back from accomplishing something, then it's a problem. I don't think trying to to do your best is a problem. I mean, obviously you want to strive for your best, but if perfectionism gets in your way, then please learn from me and just try to push through it. Okay, so last week at Camera Club, I lead this camera club at my local church once per month. It's just a group of people. Um, there are a couple professional photographers, some hobbyists, some amateurs, and just a few people from church that I'm just friends with that attend. Uh, it's just good, clean fun. Typically, I present some type of educational lesson, and then we practice photographing. But a lot of times, I sort of hear the same story. And what I want to cover is the, um, the danger in comparison comparison. See, I should write out the points. <laughs> the danger in comparing yourself to others when you're in photography. So you tend to look at other photographers and think, wow, they're really good, or I hope to be like that someday. So there's a couple of points I want to make. Number one, let's start by defining the difference between comparing yourself to others and being inspired by others. So when you look at other photographers, if you're inspired, it makes you want to pick up your camera and you're like, yes, I can do that. And you want to grab your camera and just photograph everything. And that's great. You should look to those people for inspiration. But if you're looking at other photographers and you find yourself like comparing your work, like saying things like, um, oh, they're so amazing and I'll, I'll never be that good, then the comparison becomes a problem. So you have to, you have to understand that inspiration makes you feel that anything is possible, but comparison makes you feel that nothing is possible. And if you find yourself sort of in that trap of comparison, then you should just maybe not follow that person or that photographer and just surround yourself with websites or people that inspire you. Okay. So like moving into the comparison area, really what happens when you compare yourself to someone is either one of two things. You look at them and you think, oh, I stink, I'll never be that good. And that leads to sort of this feeling of, of shame. Or you look at them and you think, oh wow, oh, I'm better than them, so <laughs> at least I'm awesome. And then that leads to sort of arrogance and pride. But either way, you compare yourself either way. It either leads to shame or to arrogance, but never to happiness. So I got the, I've been sort of mentoring and coaching around this for many years, but I just read a blog post on this by John Acuff. His website is acuff.me and I'll put a link down below, but he had a really good way of explaining this. So I'm sort of paraphrasing him, this comparison versus inspiration, and then the danger that you get into when you compare yourself to others. So when I started out, I decided not to follow any Pittsburgh photographers because I didn't want to maybe inadvertently be inspired and copy them. Oh, and by the way, I can't stand that, that like, oh, somebody's copying me. That is so ridiculous. First of all, we are not inventing anything and it's probably already been done. So like, who cares? You're putting your own unique spin on it. So, but anyway, photographers get all kind of crazy about people who are copying me. Like, I really am not that narcissistic to think that people copy me because I'm really, you know, like no one. I just take photos and they're pretty, so whatever. But anyway, see, and I lost my train of thought. If I had my notes, I would be able to follow along. What was I saying? Oh, comparison and like inspiration. Oh, I don't follow any Pittsburgh photographers and I never really have. I keep in touch with the people that I mentor for sure, but I don't follow any Pittsburgh photographers. I follow like photographers that like are all around the world that I look to for inspiration. The ones that when I look at their websites, I'm like, oh wow, I, can, I think I can do that. I'm gonna go get my camera and I'm gonna try something, but not the ones that make me feel like, oh man, I'll never be that good. And by the way, that's not because they are making me feel that way. That's on me. That's because that's my own insecurity, right? So you have to be really careful. And if you're feeling like maybe 
um, it's all been done before or the market is so saturated. I hear this all the time. There are so many photographers in the market. Why would I want to get into that? It's all been done. You know, that's, that's completely untrue, a complete fallacy. And there is no logic in that thinking because you are unique and you have a very unique set of gifts and talents and perspective based on your life experiences. So you learn photography, you learn like the technicalities of the camera and then editing the software or whatever. Everybody can anybody can learn that but then you take the photo the art the composition how you see things with your own unique perspective and that's a gift that only you can provide no one else can emulate that can copy that because it's emotion that comes from you and it's very unique and the market needs you so if you think and did it ever occur to you that maybe because you're more aware that's the reason it feels like there are photographers around every corner i mean maybe there were always photographers around every corner but you just weren't paying attention and now that you're paying attention you notice it it's kind of like me with teaching like i feel like everybody teaches photography but i also feel that the market is big enough for everyone because people will gravitate towards the people that they um, can identify with or that they like to learn from or have a, a certain teaching style or whatever so it's the same with photography the market is big enough for all of us so you can relax take a deep breath the world needs you the world needs your photographs and let me give you an example of how this sort of um, I don't know converged today in order to record this video this is my friend Lindsay and I first met Lindsay when she came to one of my photography workshops she was 17 <laughs> she was just so young I said oh my goodness sweetheart does your like is your mom okay with you being here I mean she really looked like a baby she was so young and now she is an absolute force in the newborn photography industry she's based out of Ohio I'll put a, a link to her website below Anyway, I photographed her wedding a few years ago, and this is a photo of her and her father. And today marks the one year anniversary of his very tragic, untimely passing. And I look at this photo with sadness and happiness because her wedding day was so perfect. But today is a day of grieving for her. She's so sad. And it was just the three of us, obviously, uh, the two of them in the frame. And I'm taking the photo. But it's the way that I interacted with them that makes it unique. Okay, again, I'm not narcissistic enough to think no one else could take this photo. There's nothing unique about the composition or the photo itself. But it's the way we were interacting. She knows that, I know that because I was there. So, you know, it might have been something I said. And it usually goes something like, hey, will you like look at each other and gaze into each other's eyes because it's totally natural to stand that close and look at someone when you can't even focus on them. <laughs> so I probably said something along those lines. Her dad was a little shy in front of the camera, so he smiled and it was kind of awkward, but they have this moment and it's so precious to her. She posted it recently and made a comment about how significant this photo is because of her relationship with her father and his passing. So. I feel like there was something unique that I brought to the table for her to capture this. And if 13 years ago, I would have said, oh, there's too many photographers, I don't wanna to compete, too much competition in the market, whatever, all of these excuses, then this photo would not have happened for her. And that would be really sad, wouldn't it? I mean, think about this. If, if there was a new country singer who hit the scene, it was like, oh, forget it, there's already enough country singers and there are tons of country singers but they feel like they have something unique or a different gift or, or their perspective to offer that could differentiate themselves from the others. And they're right, they do. I mean, why do you think there are tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people that audition for American Idol? Because they all have this sort of unique gift. So I implore you to find inspiration but not to compare yourself to others and to make sure you're just moving forward, bringing you into your photographs. So if your photographs, if you feel like they look too much like someone else's, maybe they don't have enough you in them. And that's what you're really selling. I, I would say the photographs are secondary. I mean, they're important, right? I'm not diminishing that, but that really you're selling you and your perspective and there's only one of you and you're very unique and the world needs you so please take more photographs jump into this industry don't be afraid there's enough room for everyone i hope that you found this useful inspirational i'll see you in the next video